It's a major wake-up call for the left, a Georgia Democrat tearing into her party's slide into extreme liberal policies after she switched sides to be a Republican. She said in a tweet, quote, I didn't leave the Republican, the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party left me when it embraced left-wing radicalism, lawlessness, and put the interest of illegal aliens over the interest of Americans. I have nothing to apologize for. Georgia State Representative Misha Maynard is now the first black Republican woman to ever serve in the Georgia General Assembly. And get this, she represents one of the bluest parts of the state. The newly minted Republican delivering a message for black Americans voting for Democrats. The Democrat Party has not been focusing on black Americans for quite a while now. Um, we cannot say that we care about people in marginalized communities if we want to keep them suppressed and oppressed. Um, one of the things that bothered me the most is when I would ask them, why are we doing this? Why is it okay for kids to not be able to read? Their response to me was, we've got to give them hope. In response, I would say, since when is a lie hope? If you really care about black people, the black people that are elected need to do something about the issues for the black people that they represent. Pretty incredible, Dana. I, I know that she was on your show this yeah. morning. And, you know, here you have a woman who uh, is going against her party, and she's doing so at great risk, be, at great political risk, too, because of the uh, the area that she's from in terms of re-election. Right. Her district, B President Biden won the district she represents by 89 percent. Right. So there's an election coming up next year in that district, and we'll see what she's able to do. What I love about it is that she doesn't care. If she's not reelected, she'd like to win again because she's trying to be persuasive and to get people to change their minds. Uh, the first two things she said that were important to me when I heard her this morning is she said education and crime. So we've been talking a lot about that, especially since the National Report Card came back two weeks ago with the abysmal results. And I think that what she's trying to explain to people, and I would suggest when she's talking about them, put some real numbers to this. Because if you are unable to read and write, and do math at a grade level in eighth grade. Your chances of going to jail, not graduating high school, not being able to get a job are so high. For, I'll just give you a couple. In unemployment, people without a high school diploma at 10% compared to 4% with people that do have a high school diploma. We're not even talking college here. Mm -hmm. And so we have school districts, entire school districts, I think in LA County, they, they cannot get eighth graders to a position where they can actually read and write. So what does that mean? You get pressure on the, uh, work, the system for benefits, but also jails. So if you want to reduce jails, one of the best ways to do it is to focus on K through 12. I think that she will, is so well-spoken that if she decides to have more of a prominent position in the Republican Party, she will do that. Oftentimes, people who switch parties are even more strongly convicted than mm -hmm. the people who have been there for a long time. And I thought she was really gracious this morning. I thought she was great, too. I saw her this morning. Um, you know, one of the things that she said, Harold, was that she was crucified. She said, as I said earlier, that the Democrat Party abandoned her. Here's a woman who put, um, she refused to put unions in front of children and education. She refused to put communities, uh, you know, against the defund the police. I mean, she has some very strong feelings. I mean, do you see yourself in that same party where you have those same feelings of, of putting community ahead of unions, making sure the communities are safe as opposed to defunding police? Uh I won't, I won't, first of all, I, I, I salute this, this young woman for, uh, for doing what I think every public servant should do. You, you serve your constituents and you serve your conscience. And uh, that may require you to leave your party at times, to vote against your party at times. Uh, she should be no more penalized for supporting uh, uh, ways, thinking more creatively and innovatively about how we educate kids that have been left behind um, than a Republican who votes for common sense gun safety laws. You should be allowed to vote for what you want to vote for and not have your party uh, trash you. She took the step, an extraordinary step, to say, you know what, I no longer want to, want to be a Democrat. Voters in that district will have an opportunity to weigh in here. But I don't like litmus tests, Judge. I think no party should apply a litmus test. The only litmus test you should apply uh, is what voters in that district want. And she's standing up 
uh, for students, for kids in her district, for families who want safer neighborhoods. And if you read that whole statement, she obviously has a point of difference with Democrats on immigration as well. So I salute her and uh, salute her for standing up for what she believes in, for serving her constituents, her conscience, and we'll see where, where this takes her in terms of an election. You know, Jesse, a recent poll found that 72 percent of Americans, uh, of voters, believe that improving K through 12 education is a top priority and should be a top priority for state lawmakers. I mean, you know, we see Glenn Youngkin kind of around the edges once in a while. Is, is that like a, a setup for Glenn Youngkin to jump into this race? I don't see room for Youngkin right now. He has a future. Now is not that. Republicans need to reach out to blacks more. They need to reach out to Hispanics more and Asians more. Would you like to hear the Jesse Waters black outreach plan? Let me oh, write this down. Please, yes. <laughs> I'm write this down. Go for it. Number one, what? the Republican Party has to remind everyone that the Republican Party fought to free the slaves. That tells the truth about the history of this country, and it puts the Democrats in a very awkward position. I would encourage black Americans to leave the cities. These cities, the air is not clean, the quarters are cramped, there's crime. Get some fresh air. You can go to Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Colorado. You could get cheap land, you get a beautiful house. And what comes with that? I'll tell you what comes with that. Better health. You're walking, you're outside, it's cleaner, you, you know, there's no violence around there, and better schools are out there. You're not in these inner city public schools. You also have access to guns. They won't let you have a gun in Philly, they won't let you have a gun in New York. It's almost impossible to do that so you can exercise your Second Amendment. And then you hit the schools, obviously, school choice. But lean into Christ, because Black Americans are very religious. They don't talk about it the same way the Republican Party talks about it. It's a little bit of a cultural difference. But the Republicans should really lean into that. And then lastly, focus on marriage and home ownership. Combining marriage with home ownership, that creates wealth. And that those two concepts are the main concepts for wealth creation in this country. That is the Jesse Waters Black Outreach Plan, and I encourage everybody to follow it. How does that differ from the White House? Oh, you want me to do the Asian one, too? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have time oh, for that? No, we don't, don't have time. Don't do it. Don't okay, do I'll do it. it next block. Lay off the Asians, Jesse. <laughs> you know, Greg, the, the, the Northwest Evaluation Association found that the average student needs about, you know, four months, four and a half months of additional time for math and another four for uh, reading. How do we resolve this problem? I mean, people can move from party to party, but it's, the, the kids it, are still suffering. It, it, first, I, the, the interesting thing here is you notice when anybody's ever leaving something, whether it's political or it's uh, cultural or media driven or whatever, it's always from the left to the right. It's people that said this has gone too far. No one ever goes, hey, I'm going to go over there because they got great ideas. Although the media may, wants you to believe that our culture is more left than it is. It's not. It's not. And what you're seeing is people that are finally saying enough. To your question, uh, what, what to do, I don't think you can do anything that Jesse uh, uh, so eloquently said. said. So eloquently said. He really is our leading African-American <laughs> historian. Um, but, um, you know, at, under the 1% rule uh, that he is under 1% black, I believe. 0.1%. 0.1%. But, but the thing is, a few years ago, we said all of these major ills in our society in general comes from one major problem, and it's K through 12. So you can't talk about marriage, and you can't talk about kids, and you can't talk about drugs, and you can't talk about racial conflict or crime, unwed pregnancy. You, you can't talk about that stuff until you fix that one thing at the top. You fix education at the start, and you end up with an amazing rebirth of society that affects all of these, but that also threatens the status quo and the rent seekers who rely on a broken system to make money. I mean, the fact is, if society, if we live in a society where all these problems go away, you don't need the five. We go away, too. But we would want that to happen in exchange for utopian society. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You speak for yourself. I know, exactly. But we allow for choice in everything, but here... And I think it's because it is so scary if you change the design of this system, you no longer create the product that does what you say. Uh, the desired outcome is, is, even though somebody might be a criminal or outside the status quo or whatever, they're still a dependent on government. Uh, do you think a, a, a young black 
kid leaving a high school that prides itself on math and English and responsibility and self-discipline and manners would spend one minute copying a TikTok video that, you know, asks you to risk your life or participate in smash and grab. No, they got better values. They got they got self-confidence. They don't need that stuff. And it goes. And, and so I think we have to, to tackle that. The concept of the of being a teacher has always been selflessness. It's called a vocation. Right. That's why we adored them when we were kids. We loved our teachers. They were like the closest thing outside your family who you loved and you trusted. And then what happened was teachers unions put the needs of what you said, put the needs of the teacher over the needs of the student. So the vocation kind of changed. And then you erase this otherworldly aura aura of the teacher. And it's replaced by this whiny, gross uh, grievance machinery that the unions represent. And I think that's where it's got to change. Choice. Get these get these kids away from these unions. Get these teachers out of these unions. Back to the days when the kid when the teachers were like something revered. But, we had to do a better job. But but have we lost these kids? Probably. Which is fine with me. I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't go out at all. I don't need to see the kids. Uh, okay. You know, I stay in, inside, well armed. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.